Thank you, Jesus. Find rest in the presence of the Lord today. <clears throat> in His presence, there is fullness of joy. Experience the joy of the Lord in your heart this morning. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord, there is peace. There's a time of refreshing. The presence of the Lord brings comfort to those who are hurting and grieving. The presence of the Lord renews our strength. Hallelujah. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob. He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you promise God that you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, we have this confidence that we will not be afraid what man can do to us. Because you are our defender, our strong tower, our refuge. We will call upon your name, Lord, in times of trouble, and you will hear us and deliver us, O oh God. And so this morning, God, in your presence, oh God, give the spirit of comfort and strength and encouragement to your people today, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, we will defeat giants. We will conquer our enemies, oh Lord. We will claim your provisions. We will claim your healing, oh God. And you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will stand with us, Lord till the end of time. So God, I pray that each one of us this morning, God will sense that this moment, that this time of the day is different. Hallelujah. Yes, God, moment by moment, you are with us, but there are certain moments, there are certain times, oh God, that you are just so specially close to us, even right now, as we listen, and as we worship you, oh God, in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know, God, in reality, oh Lord, in this life we face a lot of challenges, sadness, lack, depression, sickness, anger, whatever it is, Lord, it is not pleasing in your sight. But yet somehow, God, we stand. And Lord, in your grace, in your amazing grace, that you will see us through. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that the message again today will encourage us and Lord, bring faith because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the logos or the word of God. So Lord, I rebuke any hindrance today. I rebuke any noise, maybe from inner noise or outward noise of God. And I rebuke any uh, obstacle, Lord, in our minds, the Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray, God, that there will be an undivided attention to the preaching and teaching of your word of God. Hallelujah. Because you said, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out from the mouth of God. And so today, let there be hunger and thirst in the hearts of your people, O oh God. Amen. And that they will hear this word, not words of men, but words of God. 
So Lord, thank you that the Holy Spirit will just overcome us again today. That the Holy Spirit is hovering over us, oh God, giving us a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation, oh God. And that the words today will indeed become a logos, a revelation, Lord, for us to stand by and to live by. So Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful to be in the house of God. Amen. Always wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today we will finish our series about the five essential tactics for gaining freedom from our strongholds in order for us to live the abundant life that Jesus promised us. Amen. It's an account that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Abundantly. And this is also the culmination of our series, Demolishing Strongholds. And God willing, next Sunday, I will talk the, about the synopsis of the series of this sermon. <coughs> Amen. Now, to be the kind of person God wants us to be, our soul, our soul came, Greek word, must be transformed. Amen. For us to be the kind of person God wants you to be, the purpose of God in your life is Christ-likeness. Amen. Not somebody else that we know, that you, that you admire, or your inspiration. But God's purpose for your life and for my life is Christ-likeness. Amen. Then our soul must be transformed. Our soul that embodies the mind, our intellect, our emotions, the feelings, our will, our volition must die daily and henceforth allowing our spirit that is made alive when we, when we were born again to take control over our soul, making the soul to serve the spirit and not the other way around. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. As Saint Paul said, to take captive every thought, meaning the mind, to make it obedient to Christ. To take every thought, to take captive every thought in our minds, to make it obedient to Christ. Now our soul's transformation that is becoming outwardly who we already are inwardly is a process that has its beginning when we believe. Amen. When we believe, because freedom begins with faith, because it is, it is a matter of faith. Also, you may ask, what's the big deal with our soul? All these Sundays, you talk about transformation of souls, about our soul. Okay, what's the big deal with our soul? What does it need to go through inward transformation? Aren't we saved? If so, why so much attention given to the soul's transformation? Why? Because the soul is the pivotal point where humanity is shifted from God's intended ways. Amen. It is in the soul, the pivotal point, where humanity is shifted from God's intended way. It is part of us that has become the problem. If you have issues, strongholds, or weakness, they are in the soul. Soul is where our fallen, our sinful nature is. It is a part of us that Satan can influence to be disobedient to God. And therefore, it is the part of us that needs transformation. See, as I mentioned a while, you know, in the first series, that we're made body, soul, and spirit. On the day we receive Christ our, as our Savior, we are receiving Him as forgiveness. Your spirit is renewed instantly. Your spirit is made alive. The zoo in life, the life that comes from God, is given back to you. He planted that life in you right now. But yet our soul is still the same. With its strongholds. And yet, and so the body. Is only the channel through which either the soul or the spirit can operate. So the soul is the issue here. 
after our born again experience, our spirit received life from God and is made love that God sorry, but our soul is not changed, still in a sinful nature and is being saved or sanctified by God's enduring word of truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's so what we need to grow in our salvation. After our born again experience, we receive the spirit. Hence, we experience a warfare that is between our spirit and our soul. By exalting the soul, we make ourselves unable to comprehend the things of God. Right? As Saint Paul said, our mind is veiled. There's a veil over our mind. We cannot come with, we cannot see the truth. We cannot see, understand the things of God. It's only when we're born again and when the veil is removed and the Spirit reveals to us the Word of God, then we start growing in our salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. But that is why it is also a big deal to deal with the soul's problem because the soul, again, is what? The deciding factor on whether or not the Christ likeness within you will be released out of your born again spirit. Did you hear me, church? Why deal so much with the soul? Because your soul, my soul, is the determining factor whether that Christ likeness, Christ likeness within you will be released out of your born again spirit. And John chapter 8, verse 30 to 38 tells us, you know, the five steps toward gaining freedom from the control of negative strongholds in our soul. That is, believe, abide in the word, Know the truth, be free, and free indeed. So far, we have started the first two processes that are believing and abiding in the Word. And the last three steps that we will discuss today, and they are know the truth, be free, and free indeed, are mainly the result of continuing in the abiding process. So the main point is believe, abide in the Word, and the three steps is only the result as we continue in the abiding process. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. That is, know the truth, be free, and free indeed. Now, as we continue to abide in the Word of God, we will, we will be able to know the truth as the Holy Spirit reveal it to us. You know, sometimes when you read the scripture, just one reading, you're just reading the graphy. But as you keep reading on it, as you keep meditating upon it, as you spend time and you make time to study and to read again and to read again, then the Holy Spirit will have the opportunity, amen, when you do not rush reading the Word of God, amen, when you are not in a hurry reading the Word of God, but you spend time reading the Word of God, amen, reading again and again and again, then you're giving the Holy Spirit the opportunity to make you understand better. Amen. And when there is an understanding of the law of the Word of God, that's a revelation that is a truth whereby faith comes in. Amen. Amen. There's a constant repetition until you believe. Until you are convinced. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you know the truth, as we continue in the abundant process, we will be able to know the truth as the Holy Spirit reveal it to us. Many times we just read and end up nothing. And then you wonder why your life is a change. Why? Because you have not and you are not able to dig the truth by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Hello. Amen. Amen. Keep reading until you memorize it. Keep reading until it is at home in your circulation. John 8, 31, 32. John chapter 8, 31, 32. The word of God says, To the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
Now here in this passage of the scripture, Jesus is telling to those who believe in him that if you believe, if you hold to my teaching, meaning if you uh, if you believe, if you hold on, if you abide in my word, you are indeed my disciples. Right? Amen. Amen. True disciple said if you hold to my teaching if you abide in my words other translation says if you abide in my words then you are really my disciples and verse 32 the word then in verse 32 is just denotes the result of the abiding in the word and in this case you will know the truth are you with me so you know what jesus is saying you will truly be my disciple if you remain in my word, if you hold on to my teaching, if you abide in the word, as you continue in the abiding process, you will know the truth. You will discover the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So just knowing the truth is not just one reading, oh, I've read the Bible, that's it. No. You read again. You abide in it. You memorize it. You confess it. You think about it. You meditate on it like a bubble gum. You chew, you chew, you chew until you extract all the sweetness of it. And then, wow, now I know this is the truth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this is the truth. For example, if you are doubtful about your salvation, I suggest go to the concordance or go to your the Google and search for salvation by faith or about salvation and find verses that talks about your salvation. Read it again and again. Memorize it again and again. Study it again until you're convinced of your salvation. Amen. Go back to the word of God. To the lovers. Hallelujah. Amen. The word being in verse 32 then denotes a result as they continue to hold in his teaching and that result is they will know the truth. That means that what was lost, church, will be restored. Because one of the consequences of the fall, man now is unable to see the truth. Right? Man now is unable to see revelation. Man now is unable to understand the Bible unless you are born again, then the Word of God has new meaning. Are you with me? I used to read the Bible when I was in high school. I went to a Christian university in Europe. Every semester they give us a Bible. I once read it, but boring. I got to read comics. Then read the Bible. I mean, I have no understanding. But after I was born again, after my spirit was made alive by faith, by Jesus Christ, I love the word of God. I understand every word of God, hallelujah, because of the Holy Spirit opening our eyes of understanding to read it as well. Amen. Knowing the truth is another step in our progression toward freedom. And now the Greek word for know is ginosko, and this is very interesting. The Greek word for know is ginosko. And ginosko is a threefold knowledge that by definition is relational, progressive, and effectual. It involves intimacy, is an ongoing process, and has an effect on the one doing the knowing. So in Greek, when they say to know, right away it has a threefold understanding. Right? To know the truth. It has threefold understanding. First, it is, it is related to something higher, more important, and it is progressive. It is such as a one-time information. It is an ongoing knowing, and the person who is knowing it will benefit from knowing it. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So this knowing is not something like receiving mere information or human knowledge, but it is related to Jesus Christ that requires intimacy, just as Paul said, that I may know Him. Hallelujah. True knowledge is in Jesus Christ. Did you hear me, church? 
It is not one-time information, but it is ongoing. As St. Peter said, grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the one doing the knowing will benefit from it. And in this case, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And that benefit is freedom. Amen. That is freedom. Hallelujah. Amen. I shall abide in the word. First, you believe. And then you abide in the word. As you continue in the process of abiding, the Holy Spirit will bring revelation to you and understanding of the logos, and then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Amen. And the benefit of the one knowing is freedom in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory to God. By comparison, human knowledge will not bring us any closer to heaven. Do you agree? No one it connect us more to the spirit realm where everything matters. Intellectual knowledge won't save us. God says knowledge makes arrogant, but love edifies. There was a movie in 1984 called Rain Man. Have you seen that movie Rain Man? I heard it was good. Rain Man, the movie won four major Oscar awards. And one of those is Best Actor, the person of Dustin Hoffman. And the movie is inspired by the life of Kim Peek, Lawrence Kim Peek, the American savant. He is known as Mega Savant. Now, Savant is a person who has a profound or extensive learning, a learned scholar. So Kim Peek was a savant, and they, they call him Mega Savant. He had an exceptional memory. He was possibly one of the world's most outstanding minds. And listen to the few things his memory did for him. He could read a separate page of text with each of his eyes. Left eye would read the left page, the right eye would read the right page simultaneously. <laughs> Amazing knowledge. Amazing skill. I can't do that, can you? He could scan a page in 10 seconds and retain every bit of information. Me? I would read 10 times before I said, oh, no, I know. Him only in 10 seconds, and then retain every bit of information. He memorized entire phone books for just a few hours. Every telephone number, a phone book. He was certified expert in 15 field in 15 different fields. He could accurately recall the contents of at least 12,000 books. Accurately recall the contents of 12 I haven't read 12,000 yet. In my entire ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you know what? At age seven, he was enrolled in school, but he could stand un until after seven minutes. And so he was suspended from school. So the government sent theater to him until he graduated at the age of 14 years old in high school. At age 18, listen to this. When he was 18 years old, he was hired to manage the payroll for 160 people, a task he performed in few hours a week without the need of a calculator. <laughs> in his early 30s, he was laid off because the management decided to computerize payroll accounting. Of course, if he dies, there goes the record. It took two full-time accountants plus the computer to replace him. Amazing. He died of a heart attack. He never had any sickness. But yet, on December 19, 2009, 
He died of a heart attack. And he was born in November 11, 1951. You see, people who were born November November is smart. <laughs> and by the way, I was born also in November. <laughs> I wish I had even just one percent of his memory. You know, as I grow older, I became more forgetful. But my point is, with due respect, and I'm impressed with the life of Kim Pick. Yet, no matter how knowledgeable a person is, his knowledge is just mere knowledge that cannot save his soul or transform his soul. In fact, the Bible said, "Knowledge puff up." It is the knowledge of the truth that sets people free. Amen, church. It is the knowledge of Jesus is, the word of God, the love, the message of God to us that sets people free. Well, I'm not against education or higher education, but when it comes to making connection to heaven and in the spirit, in the spirit realm where things matter, it is about knowing the truth and the truth will set you free. God is concerned about truth, amen. Eternal, everlasting truth that outlive the latest technological discoveries or political trends. First Peter 1 3 tells us. First, uh, second Peter chapter 1 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Now, I want you to really see here, church. He said here, through our knowledge of him, is our knowledge of, this is where Gnosko has its relation. It is relational because that knowledge is always related in the person of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of him. Are you with me? Amen. Intellectual knowledge is not relational. It is not related to somebody who is like a Jesus who is God. So this knowledge is related to through Him. And you know what, church? God the light is a result of our knowledge of the truth. You, will, we, you and I will display godliness. You and I will display God in life, amen, church, as we dig deeper into the truth of God. Amen. And your life, my life, will demonstrate that godliness that this is the Father. Amen. It is a progressive godly life. We become more and more godly as we continue in the abiding process. Hallelujah. So just for practical reason here, if you just read the Bible once in a while, are you with me? If you only read the Bible when you remember reading the Bible and that is only once in three months, you'll be struggling in your godly life. Are you with me? You'll be struggling in your godly life. A godly life is a fruit-bearing life. Amen, church. The benefit of the one doing the knowing is freedom. It is the truth that will set you free. Strongholds are lies of the devil intended to steal and destroy God's purpose in your life. Did you hear me, church? Remember, the strongholds are our belief system. What you believe, whether they are true or not. They shape who you are. Your behavior and actions are influenced by what you believe, whether true or not. Are you with me? Amen. What you believe will shape you who you are. Your words, your action, your, your, your culture, your, your family dynamics will always be influenced by what you believe. Amen. The way you handle your money is influenced by what you believe. Are you with me? Your work attitude is always influenced by what we believe, church. Biblically speaking, stronghold carries a negative note. It is bondage. Stronghold makes a person its prisoner without any chance of escape. Are you with me? No chance of escape. 
Only knowing the truth will set you free. Amen. Only the truth revealed in God's logos can replace the lies of the devil in our minds. All this growing years, all this exposure to secular knowledge, to our culture, and the culture of others, you know, and has this negative impact in our thoughts and our minds, yes, is only the word of God, is only the truth in the logos of God can renew that. Yes. <clears throat> only God's logos have the power to renew your mind. This knowledge and truth is revealed by the Holy Spirit as we continue in the abiding process, as we continue to hold fast our Hallelujah. Amen. So, so far, I, was, I, I believe I was able to connect and to convince you that it's not just occasional abiding. Amen. It is just, you know, when I have the time, I'll do it. When, you know, when, when I'm not too busy, I will do it. It is a continuous abiding. It is a process that there, that there is a need for a commitment for us to do. Hallelujah. For us to know the truth. John 8, 36 says, and so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Hallelujah. So there's five steps or there's five essential tactics for getting freedom first is believe. Abide in the word, know the truth, be free, and free indeed. I said a while ago that these last three steps are just but the result of abiding in the word. So John 8, 13 says, so, hallelujah, conclusion, if the Son, who is the Son, Jesus Christ, sets you free, what? You will be free indeed. You know what? Jesus spoke about being free and then free indeed. It implies completion. Amen? It is one thing to be free. It is another thing to be free indeed. Amen? Now the word indeed, again in Greek, is ontos. The word indeed in Greek is ontos and it denotes Complete reality, 100%. So when Jesus said, when the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. That freedom is a reality. It is a complete reality. It is not half done. It is complete reality. It is 100%. And we have to pray the total freedom, complete freedom by faith. Because freedom is by faith, where it is a matter of faith. Amen, church? Meaning there is not a slight chance of error or a 5% margin to fiction or for fiction. It is entirely real. Amen. And there are Christians who have walked through the soul's liberation process and ended up 80, 90, even 98% free. Yet the remaining fraction came back to haunt them. I remember a few years back in Davao, and not only just in Davao, but even some part of the Philippines, and about the deliverance thing. That they teach about deliverance, and they have these deliverance sessions. After, after attending a series of teachings, you know, then they will set a schedule. If you're willing, you know, come to this room here, and there are pastors or leaders there, uh, there that will pray for you for the deliverance sessions, you know. And the requirement is you must have to throw up. You puke, you know. You. And so after that, they will examine the color of. <laughs> and they'll interpret the color. It's green, demonic, it's something like that, da, 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 da. And then they declare, you're free. You've been delivered from that. Whatever weakness you have, adultery, vices, drinking, whatever, you know, you, you, you confess that and will deliver that and they will lay hands a few, four hours, you cry hard and then finally out of dizziness, you say, oh, praise God. And Lord says, hallelujah, he is set free. And after a few months, we came back. The same thing. Again. Why? 
because it's only an experience, not in the truth. That's right. Are you with me? Are you with me? Only 80, 90, or 98 percent, yet the remaining fraction came back to haunt them. If we fail to carry the process of freedom all the way to its completion, sooner or later the remnant of a certain stronghold will grow back to its former size, sometimes returning bigger, stronger, and more alluring, and more destructive. Are you with me? Are you with me, church? That's why I remember David and Goliath. David's completion of victory is when he cut off the head of Goliath off from his head. Amen. So there's no chance. Uh, he just fainted and came back again and fight. Are you with me? Likewise in your freedom towards completion. Amen. The word indeed has more meaning and insight. Yes, Christ has already set our spirit free as we work the process of freedom from of our soul, receives revelation of the truth, and in the deepest part of our knowing, we have faith that we are free. Our soul is becoming free of the strongholds that held it back for so long. But the word indeed, in Greek ontos, as part of the process, requires seeing something through to the very end. Yeah. Amen. When you have this on us, when this word indeed, you know, it's all by faith because, yes, I'm free right now, but by faith I see through. I see beyond this that I'm really free. I am completely free again. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And Jesus said in Mark 4, 8, Still others it fell in good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some were playing 30, some 60, some 100 times. <coughs> That is what we are after. Yes. A hundredfold harvest in your soul. Amen. That's what we are after. Glory to Jesus. It is like a woman carrying a baby. Three months, six months, and nine months. Though the seed has been planted and life has been conceived, the process must be lived out. The baby must be cared for, protected, and nourished by the mother's body. And though she or he can't be seen, there are unmistakable signs. We know there's a baby in the womb. Before the ultrasound is even invented. Amen. We use pencil to determine if it's a boy or a girl. Have you tried that? <laughs> you know, we use the pencil to the left, whatever it is. I remember that. You know, oh, it's a boy. And then a girl. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and though she or he can't be seen, there are unmistakable signs. We know there's a baby in the womb. And then at the end of nine months, the baby indeed. Are you with me? You see, so when the mother is pregnant, he is saying through that after nine months, the baby will come in be. The completion of the process of life in her womb. In reality, we all know that when the seed is planted, we're just beginning a long but rewarding process of life. And so it is with the seed of God's word, we must nurture and feed that which has been planted in us. As it grows, we will become ever more convinced that there is life growing in us. Revelation is occurring. The knowledge of truth is coming. At some point, we will be as certain of complete freedom as we would be if the process were finished. Faith has come. Freedom is inevitable for our soul. Then the birth takes place. Adam's sin is reversed. So okay, our soul is again at the, at the cross and yoke again in God. Our spirit is free to soul. We are free indeed. Amen. Amen. I'd like to read to you this illustration as a conclusion. 
A great story has made the rounds about a scrawny, seemingly undernourished old man who entered a restaurant and asked who he needed to see to get a job at a nearby lumberjack camp. You will need to go far, the restaurant owner replied as he pointed to a nearby booth. The, su the supervisor is having lunch right over there. The job seeker approached the supervisor and announced, I'm looking for a lumberjack job. The boss politely tried to talk him out of the idea. Surely this weak old man wouldn't be able to fill a tree, let alone keep up with the daily quotas. Give me a few minutes of your time and I'll show you what I can do, suggested the man. When the two arrived at the group meeting to be cleared, the slender, persistent old man picked up an axe and proceeded to chop down a huge tree in record time. That's incredible, the boss said. Where did you learn to fell trees like that? Well, replied the old man, you've heard of the Sahara forest? Hesitantly, the boss replied, don't you mean the, the Sahara desert? The old man produced a smile and said, sure, that's what it's called now. <laughs> Church, soon your testimony will be, that's what I used to be. Amen. As you continue to abide, as you believe and you continue to abide the word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, and the son set you free. You are free indeed, and you look back, that's what I used to be. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Freedom! Freedom in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All you need to do is be committed to the process. All we need to do is, you know, be committed to the process and by faith receive the grace of God, the amazing grace of God, until one morning you wake up. I used to be doing that, but now no more. Hallelujah. Amen. The truth works. The truth delivers. The truth will transform our soul from glory to glory. Be patient. And be committed. To the process. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see what you are right now. Amen? Once you were controlled by your soul, now you're controlled by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah! And you truly live the abundant life that Christ has promised us. Yes, you are not perfect. Hallelujah. We are in the process. But somehow, one stronghold falling down, another coming down, another coming one item at a time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As long as you live, and you will see each time you're growing in godliness and from God's glory. Amen. So for practical suggestions, I'd like to leave with you this morning, church. Be honest to your, to, your, to your life. Be honest to yourself. What are your Weaknesses. What are your strongholds? Then go back to the Bible. What? Go back to the Bible. Find truth that will address that particular, that specific need, that specific weakness, one at a time, one at a time. Are you a gossiper? <coughs> Read the book of Proverbs. You want to stop gossiping? Are you with me? Stop maligning someone else's life. Go back to the scripture. Lord, I can't stop the gossip. Every scope, new information. That, huh? Really? You know what? I can't control myself, Lord. I'm a Christian. I'm born again, Lord. I can't control my mouth. Go to the book of Proverbs. Are you with me? Amen? Are you a quarrelsome wife? Lord, I'm a Christian, I don't want it, Lord, oh, God, please, my husband is already staying out of the house because of my nugging over, help me, Lord, I can't stop it, no, you can't. Go back to the word of God, memorize, study, 
Memory study, sing it, you know, memory study again. And the Holy Spirit reveal the truth to you, and then pretty soon you are renewed in your mind. Are you a governor? Do you love to spend in the casino? I want to be director this morning. And you lost a lot of money, and you come back again, you know, thinking that this time you might be your luck. I want you lost, you will get it. But you lost more. And you want to be set free? Go back to the Word of God. Amen. Research the scripture about gambling, you know, and memorize it, and memorize it, and study it, and, study, and embrace it. Are you stingy? You don't give your tithes or not offering to the church because you have more electric bills to pay, you have more mortgages to pay, and so forth and so on. You have shoes to buy, you have this to buy, you have jewels to buy, and you can give your tithes. Go back to the book of Malachi. There's abundance, amen. amen. This church will only grow as we grow in our giving as well. Amen. amen. All the churches by faith, you true, but we need cash too. <laughs> amen. Go back to the scripture. Are you with the church? God loves a cheerful giver. If you are afraid to witness for somebody to bring to church or bring them to Christ Jesus our Lord, go back to the scripture again. Go back to Matthew and Mark, Luke and John and read and memorize it until that stronghold, hallelujah, is replaced by the word of truth. Are you afraid? Go back to the scripture. Read verses, memorize verses, study scriptures, hallelujah. Amen. Are you full of poopias? Go back to the scripture. God, hallelujah, will deliver us through his word. Are you in the church? Life is too short to live in bondage. When Christ said, I come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm still working with my own bondage, church. I keep memorizing words. I keep memorizing. I'm putting the practice while I'm preaching here. You know, praise God, hallelujah. God is awesome. Be a servant of God's word. Amen? Amen. Be a servant of God's word. Amen. A learned Christian scholar. But of course, not just head knowledge, but discovering the truth, living out the truth, and be free in it. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we realize, oh God, we are not denying that the soul sometimes takes over us. Our weaknesses, Lord, are the issues that we have in our hearts, oh God. And sometimes we come to a point of accepting it and justifying it, oh God. No, we cannot deny it. Deny it, Lord, will only multiply the problem, excuse me, in our hearts, oh God, in our soul. But Father, is an assurance, there is a provision, oh God. There is a provision in your word, oh God. Hallelujah, that we can be set free. Hallelujah, our weapon that we fight with are not the weapons of this world. In contrary, they have divine powers to demolish strongholds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To demolish arguments and every pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. It has divine power to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So when the sun sets you free, you are free.